guys, it's your girl T and it's time for another recap of Young and the Ratchet, aka Love and Hip Hop ATL. So we had a good old time, like I always say, the other night on Twitter, we went in on Monday night. So let's go ahead and get this recap started. So in the opening scene, we have Stevie J and Jocelyn and they're having a date night. And basically they're there to talk about this thorn in their side, AKA Don, the booking agent. Don is Jocelyn's so-called friend and booking agent. And Stevie has gotten wind that Don is getting ready to basically put them on blast, put all their business out there. And Jocelyn is mad. She says that the woman is dead to her and that she don't care about the whole situation and she wants the situation taken care of. So Stevie tells Jocelyn, okay, fine, I'm going to try and meet up with her and we're going to get this handled. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, we have Carly Red. Carly Red is starting up a cosmetics line. I want to know why every reality TV show top comes out with some type of cosmetic line, Instagram boutique, a tell-all book, a sex book. It seems like this is the new thing now for reality TV show tots. So she's there and she's talking about her makeup line. Rashida's there and so is Kalima from Dirty Money. And I didn't understand why Kalima was there. She had on a bright purple weave. I'm like, damn, Demona Scott really sit up here and really hire everybody and their mama in the ATL to take part on this show because it seems like everybody's coming on this show. So Kalima's there talking about, you know, how she was in Dirty Money and she's just trying to do her thing. I'm like, bitch, are you part of the cast now? Because I didn't see you in the opening credits. Why is she getting a confessional? So Rashida's talking about how much she loves Elizabeth lipstick and y'all know damn well the lipstick that Rashida is wearing is called Grey Friday by MAC. That is not Carly Red's line. I don't give a damn what Rashida says. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, we have Mimi Fost, and she gets this mysterious call from Don. Mimi says that she doesn't know who Don is, but she's going to meet with her because she has all this tea to tell her about Stevie and Jocelyn. So Don gets there with her messy ass, and she's just running her mouth to Mimi. She's talking about how their wedding is fake. They don't even know when they got married, that there's no wedding certificate, and they just did this so that way they could be on the cover of Benzino's magazine, Hip Hop Weekly. So after Don is sitting there telling Mimi all this stuff, Mimi goes in her confessional. She's acting like she don't give a shit like she already knew everything that was going down my thing is this Mimi if you don't care about Jocelyn or Stevie then why are you sipping and drinking on the tea because if I don't care about somebody I don't care about their business I don't want to hear no gossip about them I'm gonna go on doing me so it's obvious that Mimi is still infatuated with Stevie and Jocelyn otherwise she wouldn't even met with this woman Moving on to the next scene. Next scene, we need to get Scrappy and Bambi TV show nominations for Best Actor and Actress in a Miscarriage scene. This scene was so over-dramatized, I don't even know where to start. First of all, Scrappy comes running up the steps, and he's running because he got some bad news from Bambi. Then he gets up there, and Bambi's laying in the bed, and she's all sad and depressed. And Scrappy's like, what's wrong, Bam? What's going on? And Bambi's like... I drove myself, I mean, I rode my bike um, to the hospital. No, she didn't say that. She was like, she went to the hospital the other night and she had a miscarriage. And so when she says that, Scrappy's face falls and he's like, oh, bam. Oh, bam, no. No, bam, no. And he gets like, you know, real upset and dramatic and she's just laying there. And this whole scene is just nuts. Everybody on Twitter went in on them. Everybody was like, this shit was staged for TV. Bambi has since released her, I guess, her miscarriage record. She's saying that she really did miscarriage. Other folks are saying that she probably used the morning after pill and they're trying to create a storyline. So the whole situation was a mess. But nobody on Twitter was buying this whole miscarriage. Everybody thought it was a script for the show. Moving on to the next scene. Next scene, we have good old Kirk. So Kirk is there and he's meeting up with Stevie Jane Benzino and basically they're talking about the whole situation, how Kirk got back the DNA test results and that baby Carter is Kirk's son. So while they're sitting there playing pool and having a good time, that young waitress Jasmine comes walking up and everybody's looking at this like, hold up Kirk, why are you so infatuated with Jasmine? What's going on with y'all? And Kirk is like, it's no big deal. You know, when I come here, she gives me really stiff drinks and, and she's cool and I want her to be the nanny. And even Stevie J is giving Kirk the side eye like, is this fool for real? Does he really think that he can bring this girl over to their house and Rashida's going to be okay with the situation? And they're trying to talk Kirk out of it. And I always find it funny how Benzino and Stevie can give the best advice to everybody else, but then they won't take their own advice if they're still dishing everybody else. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, we have Mama D and Bambi. Mama D has come over there to come visit Bambi and make her some homemade soup for the soul. 
I don't know where she got this container from, but all of a sudden she pulls this container out and she just starts pouring shit in a pot and stirring it. She looked like a voodoo woman out for Princess and the Frog. We were just on Twitter cracking up at her making Bambi this soup. And the whole time Bambi's giving her the side eye. Bambi's looking like she don't know if she wants to drink the soup, if she wants to taste the soup. She just seems real nervous. So Mama D says that, you know, she feels real bad for Bambi and she understands what Bambi's going through because she had a miscarriage before. Now, she didn't say this was when she was younger. She just said she had a miscarriage. So that leads me to believe that this wasn't too long ago. And then people started questioning, well, who was fucking Mama D? Who got her pregnant and who was the baby's father so folks are roasting mama d on twitter behind this whole little scene her making the soup her talking about her own miscarriages the whole situation was just a mess it's like mona scott is really reaching with all her scripts this season moving on to the next scene so in the next thing we have Young Jock and Carly. So Young Jock is deciding to go meet up with Carly because Carly done called his phone 150 times and he's tired of it. And he wants to know what Carly, you know, what's going on with her and why she keeps blowing up his phone. So he gets there. Now, mind you, they're at a public restaurant. It's a fancy restaurant. And Carly admits that, you know, the reason why she was all up on Jeremiah was to make Young Jock jealous. And Young Jock is like, you know, I don't have time for these childish games. You need to get your life. You need to figure this out. Then all of a sudden, Carly grabs his hand. Then she takes Jock's ashy-ass finger. She puts it in her mouth and she starts giving his finger head. Lord, when I saw this, I damn near faded. Like I said on Twitter, this was my face when Carly was giving Jock's finger head. This old ass tot needs to get her life. This woman is damn near 50 years old and behaving like a straight up chicken head. After she gave his finger head, she then proceeded to walk over there, start making out with him, and then she starts grabbing his package in the middle of the restaurant. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with this woman? It's like, have some type of respect for yourself. Carly just goes above and beyond with the ratchetness. During the first week's episode, Young Jock admitted to taking bird baths. And then Carly also said that his penis smells like fish. She says that he'll sleep with other people and then he'll just take a bird bath as opposed to getting in the shower and washing himself off. So if he's not even washing his private parts off properly, what makes you think he's washing his hands off properly? I mean, this whole situation made me sick to my stomach. Moving on to the next damn scene. Carly's just too damn old to be that damn ratchet. And the next thing we have Stevie, he's decided to meet up with Don, the messy ass booking agent. He's decided to basically fire her. He's tired of the whole situation. Jocelyn doesn't want to have anything to do with it. So Don comes and this bitch brings a briefcase full of shit. And we know damn well she got all that dirt from Mona Scott. And she's going back and forth with Stevie. And she's like, you know what? Y'all are broke. I know who has money. I know who don't have money. And she, you know, she just starts pulling up all these papers. And she's talking about how their marriage is fake. And she has all the proof. She has the text messages. And my thing is, Don has ruined any credibility that she will ever have in this industry. I wouldn't pay Don's whack ass to mow my grass. This woman is messy as hell. If you can sit up there and tell all of Stevie J and Jocelyn's business, who is going to trust you to be their booking agent the next time? Who's going to trust you to look out for them? Who's going to trust you for you to do things in their better interest? So I'm not feeling down at all. This bitch was messy as hell. And I'm glad that Stevie J and Jocelyn fired her. Regardless if their marriage is fake or not, that wasn't Don's place to put their business out there. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, Deb Anthony decides to invite Tammy and Waka Flocka over to her house. She's baking bread and she's cooking dinner and everything. So they're around the table and they're having this kumbaya moment. You know, Tammy starts crying about how she used to feel so alone when Waka would go out on tour. And Deb is so excited to give Waka away his wedding. She's so excited for the marriage. And, you know, Tammy starts crying and then Deb starts crying. And, and Waka Flocka's taking pictures of them. And everybody on Twitter is like, oh, this is so sweet. While they're having this kumbaya moment you know what i'm saying folks is wiping away tears and folks are talking about how this moment is so sweet but you know sweetness don't last too long on twitter because it couldn't have been 1.5 seconds before somebody sent out this damn tweet basically putting waka flocka on blast again for cheating on tammy this Todd had posted this picture of her and waka and she basically said that waka was still cheating on tammy so the whole situation was a mess folks started retweeting this and then they also started tweeting this mean time my Deb Antony and Samuel L. Jackson are long lost twins. Twitter ain't shit. They made sure to go out their way to mess up this entire love fest. I was falling out when I seen these tweets. Moving on to the next scene. The next scene we have Kirk and he's at their house and he has invited Jasmine to come over and meet baby Carter. So Kirk is sitting on the couch with Jasmine. He hands over baby Carter and baby Carter's looking like Harpo, who this woman? Who this woman that's carrying me? 
This girl can barely support baby Carter's neck, but we're supposed to believe that she's fit to be a nanny. So while they're sitting there talking and conversing, Rashida walks in and she rocks in like, who the hell is this random bitch sitting on my couch? Rashida had me cracking up because her face, she looked like she's ready to whoop both their asses. So then Rashida walks in the scene, poor baby Carter's looking like, mama, I ain't got nothing to do with this. He's giving Kirk the side eye. And Rashida's like, you know what, what's going on here? And Kirk is literally sitting there acting like this is okay. He's looking at Rashida like, duh, what's the big deal, Rashida? Why are you mad? And Rashida's like, you know, why do you have some random chick holding my baby? What's going on here? And Kirk is like, well, you know, I feel like she's more fit to watch our baby. I met her at the sports bar when I was out there with, with Benzino. And Rashida's like, let me get this right. So you don't want my mother, who is the baby's grandmother, to watch our child. But you think I'm about to allow you to let some random chick sit here and babysit my child? Oh, hell no. So then Rashida demands her baby back from Jasmine. And they go passing the baby down the line. You know, this whole situation is a straight up mess. And poor baby Carter's looking at his mama like, I don't even want to be on this planet no more. I mean, this whole situation is crazy. And for Kirk to think that it's okay to invite some random chick he met at a sports bar to come watch his son, him and that damn milk there that's stuck in his damn throat need to grow up. You know, I don't understand why he would think that this was okay. I don't understand how he thought that Rashida would be okay with this whole situation. So then once Rashida starts popping off, he walks Jasmine to the door and she ends up leaving. And Rashida tells him flat out, I really feel like beating the shit out of you and her. This makes no sense whatsoever. And Kirk is like, well, that's on you. If you don't appreciate me finding a good babysitter, oh, well, I'm done with this situation. And then he walks off with the attitude like she did something wrong. I'm to the point now where I'm convinced that, you know what, Rashida, I think you need to let this go. Kirk is not the man for you. You know, she tried. She tried to make her marriage work. And this dude is just straight up disrespectful. So I think now Rashida needs to just walk away from this situation and go file for divorce. Because it's obvious that Kirk wants to do him. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, we have Carly and Jock. And Jock decides to go take Carly to this house. And his friend Kadia is the one showing him the house. So as they get there, Carly's just getting this really weird, weird vibe from Kadia. It seems like she's met Kadia one too many times. She's a star. Tyler, she's a photographer, she's a makeup artist. Kadia wears way too many hats and Carly just does not feel comfortable. So while Kadia is showing them the house, you can tell that this bitch is not a real estate agent. She don't know how to talk. She don't know where nothing's at. She's literally spinning around in circles. And then she's trying to show them the kitchen and she almost trips. So then young Jock says that he wants to go check out the speakers in the home and he ends up leaving. And the whole time, Kadia just has this really weird smirk on her face. She's been watching them the whole time. So finally, Carly's like, you know what? Um, I just get this really weird vibe from you. Are you fucking with Jock? Because I know he tends to fuck a lot of bitches in the ATL. And Kadia's like, no, he's not one of the many dudes I'm fucking. I am fucking him. But the way she said it was just so proper, I fell the hell out. So as soon as she said that, Carly grabbed her damn bag and she swung it in Kadia's face. Next thing I know, Kadia ran after her and starts trying to beat Carly's ass. Oh, scene had me dying. Now, Carly Ray knows she is too damn young to be trying to swing on these damn tots that are half her age. Carly, don't break your motherfucking 50 year old hip trying to fight no 25 year old tot. First of all, you had no business asking this woman a question that you didn't want the answer to. These 25-year-old tots out here have the same mentality as your old ass does. She has no shame, nor does she have zero fucks to give that she's fucking your so-called man. The thing is this, Carly, don't ask questions that you don't want answers to. So once they start fighting, young Jock walks in the scene. He's like, what's going on here? Security walks in the scene, and we'll have to tune in next week to find out what happened on The Young and the Ratchet. So go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this week's episode of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. What did you you guys think about the whole situation with the miscarriage what did you think about Rashida and Kirk and then what did you think about Kadia and Carly Red getting into it don't forget to like and share my videos these videos take quite a while for me to edit because I want to make them really enjoyable to everyone who watches or doesn't watch the show so don't forget to share my recaps and also don't forget to follow me I am at lovely T see you guys next week for next week's episode of love and hip-hop Atlanta deuces